and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stamp set, Pool Party and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing our brand new stitched ripple backdrop die that is so cool. So let's go ahead and check these products out. We're gonna start off by stamping out the Pool Party stamp set and this stamp set is so cute and it has these adorable characters that you can put on an inner tube or a beach towel. So it has a unicorn, a sloth, a llama and a cute little cat and then here is this fun little inner tube and then of course a perfect stripy beach towel there's also some other really great accessories in this set we have a beach ball we have these really fun little flip-flops we also have a snorkel which you can layer over all of those different critters and some sunglasses out as well which look really really cute on each one of those adorable little guys we have some cute little water ripples that you can stamp in your card to help set the scene we have a larger one and a smaller one we also have a little water splash that's really really fun to put around that inner tube we have this cute little speech bubble and some fun phrases that can go inside we have happy summer stay cool happy b day we have relax hello and also a cute little zzz for when they're sleeping on the beach towel <laughs> We have some really fun sentiments too. We have just floating by to say, and then all these different things that you can put below. So just floating by to say hello, make a splash, take it slow, and then you can stamp have a, and then there's all these different phrases with go with that. So have a magical, have a relaxing, have a happy, and then you can stamp either birthday or day so you could use it for lots of different occasions by just using day or birthday of course for birthdays we also have the word summer too to go along with this fun summery theme so i love how you can mix and match all of these different phrases to create the perfect one for your card and of course we have an exclamation point to add to the end of all of the phrases so now we're gonna use our Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And for the unicorn, I love doing this fun little rainbow mane. Rebecca over here at Lawn Fawn headquarters always does that with unicorns. It was so cute and so much fun. So I got all of her colors and had to do it just like her and it just looks adorable. And then we added just a little bit of a light gray marker around him just to highlight him a little bit so we wouldn't just leave him a plain white. And you can see by adding that little bit of light gray, it really gives him a cool three-dimensional look. Now we're coloring in our sloth with some nice E40 markers and some grays and he's looking so cute. And then we're gonna use some warm grays for our adorable little llama and then some light browns for his face. And you can see just how cute he is. Add a little pink on his cheeks and a little pink in his ears. And then we're gonna go ahead and color in this cute little cat. I love doing cats because you could color them like all these different cats you may either know or maybe have in your family. And when I was a kid, we had these cute little yellow orange cats. They were outside cats, but they always came by and said hi, and I just love them. Um, and we named them Daisy Boy and Daisy Girl because we thought there was only one cat for a long time. And then later on, we found out there was two that would look exactly the same. So this is our cute little Daisy here. I'm adding in those fun little stripes and then just blending them out with a lighter marker. Now for the inner tube, this is so fun because you can use rainbow colors, you could use all sorts of different color schemes to go along with whatever pattern paper you're using, or maybe even pick out some favorite colors for who the recipient is the card's gonna be for and use their favorite colors on the inner tube and on that cute little towel. Now here you can see that I'm using the same colors for both the inner tube, the beach towel, and the beach ball so that everything coordinates and looks really, really great. I'm also using it on the flip-flops as well. So once I have my yellows out, I'm gonna do all of my yellow stripes. Once I have my greens, I'm gonna do all of my green stripes. And so here you can see I was kind of playing around and I didn't like the colors how they turned out for the greens. So I ended up layering some brighter greens over top and that worked for the inner tube. And then I just used my brighter greens for the beach ball and the towel. And then we'll do some fun little turquoise for the last color of that ring there and then we'll do that same color on the beach ball and also on the towel and I love how everything looks really really cool and coordinated now for the beach ball we needed to finish out our rainbow so we're going to do some orange on that and then I'm going to bring orange into the snorkel just to kind of help coordinate all of those colors together and then last but not least we're going to need to add some fun purple to that beach ball to finish out the rainbow now to make the rest of that inner tube just look a little bit more 3D, I added some light gray all along the outside edges of the white sections and then blended it out with a colorless blender. And now it really looks nice and finished and kind of three dimensional and it was super easy to do. 
Here are the coordinating dies for the set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to take those dies and we're going to line them up with our stamped images. We're going to use some low tack tape to hold them in place, run it through the die cut machine, and now we'll have perfectly cut out images that are absolutely adorable. And then here is a look at all of the stamps from this set. They are so cute and so much fun to layer and mix and match. And this is what that looks like. So you can use any of those characters on either the beach towel or the inner tube. So you can interchange any of those on each of those items. You can also add the snorkel and those cute little sunglasses to any of the critters as well. So you can see I'm just mixing and matching them and it looks absolutely adorable. You can use those cute little water waves to help set your scene, add little splashes around, or use the beach ball and the the little flip-flops to help set your scene too. Now, when we designed this stamp set, we had some oldie but goodie products in mind, and one of them was the Really High Five stamp set. So this is a stamp set that came out a few years ago, and all these critters are either supposed to be bouncing on the trampoline or holding up balloons. But guess what that bunny looks like? It looks like he's cannonballing. So he could cannonball into the pool, and you can see that with that cute little water wave right there. The other guy that's really cute is this bear. He almost looks like he's just jumping right out of the water and the snorkel fits him perfectly too. So I love being able to use an oldie but a goodie favorite stamp set with these fun new images. Other older product that we were thinking of when we created this set was the stitched pond and stitched pond frame because this makes the perfect swimming pool and you can create shakers too. And we're gonna be doing that in just a second and it is so much fun, you guys are gonna love it. But first up, we're gonna take a look at the stitched ripple backdrop. This backdrop is so cool because it creates a really cool stitch detail and it cuts a backdrop size, which is the standard size of five and a half by four and a quarter. Now this is the perfect water texture, but you can also use it as just cool texture for the backdrop background of your card. You could have it both landscape and vertical. You could do all sorts of cool things with this backdrop and it's so much fun. We're using it of course a lot with this fun summer pool theme and lots of ocean theme things, but you can also use it with our cool crafty paint things that we have from this release and we'll be showing you that too. Now it's time to create that shaker we were talking about and we're starting with the stitched ripple backdrop and we're going to die cut that from some white cardstock and we're going to do a really cool ink blending technique that Callie from the design team came up with and it was such a cool idea. And so what we're doing here is we're taking one of these slimline hillside stencils and some peacock feathers distress ink. And the stencil isn't a perfect match to the stitch ripple backdrop, but it's really, really close. And so it's gonna help you ink this up. And this definitely doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna be the base of our pool and we're gonna have glittery shakery things on top. So I wasn't too worried about it not being exactly perfect, but there's something about the inking lining up with those cool stitch edges that looks absolutely amazing and really looks like the ripple in a pool. Then I went ahead and inked that bottom section to kind of fill in that part of the pool. And then I just kept taking the stencil and shifting it around, finding areas where it would line up. Once again, not worrying about it being perfect because the imperfections is actually kind of what makes it really look like this ripply pool, right? Like maybe someone had just jumped into the pool and you have these cool little ripple effects. So I'm just moving that stencil around again, kind of sticking a step back, taking a look, seeing where there might be a little bit too much white and continuing to just kind of ink up those edges. Then to finish it up, I I went ahead and just took my brush and kind of inked over the whole thing. That kind of took over some of those imperfections and also filled in some of those white areas. Now we're gonna take out that stitched pond die and also the stitched pond frame. This die is so cute, it's so fun. It can be an ice skating rink, it can be a pond for frogs, and now it's gonna be our swimming pool. So we're gonna start in with the one that has the outside in detail that's gonna give us the full pond. And we're gonna line that up with this piece of paper. And so I'm just gonna put it on top there and kind of see how I want the ripples to look. I'm just kind of moving the die around, kind of looking through it to see what's gonna look perfect. Once I find that perfect placement, I'm gonna take some low tack tape, some post-it note tape, here, hold that in place, and then we'll run it through the die cut machine and we'll have this really cool custom pool bottom. Next, we're gonna work on the shaker portion of this pool. So we're gonna do that by die cutting the stitched pond frame. And we're gonna die cut that from white cardstock and we're gonna die cut that, I think it was seven or eight times. And what we're gonna be doing is stacking these all up on that pool to create a well for our glitter to move around in. So I'm gonna take some liquid glue here from my glue tube, go all the way around the edge, and then I can just line that right up with the pool. 
then after that, I'll take liquid glue on top and keep lining up each of those pieces of cardstock. And that's going to create this really cool raised edge. Now, there are lots of ways to create raised edges for shakers. You can do it this way, or you could use some foam tape. Another really fun way to do it is to use some of that fun foam stuff that you can get in the kids section at a craft store. You can actually run that through your die cut machine with the frame die, and you would have a frame that was cut from that fun foam. And that's really fun to do as well, because that gives you a nice thick edge too. So there's lots of cool ways to do this. But in this case, I decided to just stack a bunch of pieces of paper here. And now you can see that we have this cool raised edge in the center and that's going to give a place for all of our glitter to shake and move around. We're going to take one final stitch pond frame and this is going to be the actual edge of our pool and to make a cool pool edge detail we're going to use the brick stencil and that's going to give it this really really fun look. So we're going to take that brick stencil and lay it right on top of that frame and then we're going to take some crunchy leaf ink and we're going to ink blend that on. It's going to create this really really cool brick texture that's really going to make this pool come to life. So I'm just holding that stencil in place just with my fingers and just lightly very very lightly ink blending it because I wanted it to be a very very light brown. So I didn't need to take out any tape or anything because this pretty much held in place since it's a really small area and just a really really light ink blending on top. And now you'll see my favorite part as we pull up the stencil we have this really cool brick detail that's really going to bring this pond to life. My favorite tricks for stencil is to use an anti-static powder tool or you could use cornstarch or baby powder on a paintbrush and just put it all along the inside edges. What this is going to do is remove any excess stick that might be there from your liquid glue or tape and it's going to take away any of that tackiness so that all of your either sequins or glitter pieces will be able to move around freely. So now that we've added all that powder in there and removed any tackiness, I'm going to take out some chunky glitter. I love this stuff and it is perfect for shakers. And for the pool, I thought it was really, really pretty because it really catches the light and looks like that shimmery water. So we're going to put a bunch of that glitter inside and then we're going to take that pond there and we're going to die cut that from some acetate. Now at this point I realized it needed more glitter, right? Just add glitter. We just need to add some more. So we're going to add some more glitter inside and then we're going to take the liquid glue. I'm going to put it all along that frame and then we're going to take our acetate piece and layer that on top. And that's going to become our window into the pool and it's also going to create the little shaker mechanism by sealing all of that glitter inside. Now to make sure that it had enough time to dry, I really took my hands on top and pressed down and I let it dry for a while there because I was using liquid glue instead of tape and I wanted to make sure that it was nice and secure. And already you can see the little shaker pieces moving inside and how much fun that is. So now to give it the nice finished look, we're going to take that piece that we inked with the brick stencil and we're going to layer that right on top. That's going to cover up any of that liquid glue or the edges of the acetate and really give it this beautiful swimming pool finished look. So I'm going to hold that in place too with my hands, make sure that that glue dries and look how pretty this is. Oh, I'm loving it so much. We're going to take some spiffy speckles paper and we're going to cut that down to be four by five and a quarter and then we're going to add some tape runner to the back and attach that onto a standard side card base that is five and a half by four and a quarter and that's going to give us this nice little eighth inch border around and you'll see how pretty that is with the white and then we have the edges with the little splatters. I really like the splatters a lot because once again it kind of feels like it might be an outdoor area, might be the outdoor flooring for this really cool swimming pool. Now here is the pool party stamp set and so we're going to take all of these cute images and layer them around this pool. Now the first thing that I'm going to add on is that beach towel and the reason for that is I want to make sure that there's enough room for the beach towel before I build the rest of the scene. So we're going to add the beach towel and then we'll add some flip flops on top with a little foam square there just for some little 3D and I think that looks so cute like they've left their flip flops and towel on the outside while they're all hanging out in the pool. Now that we have that placement, we can flip over our cool shaker mechanism, add some tape runner to the back, and then attach that right down onto the card. Now my favorite part is adding all of these little critters to the inner tube. So I just add some tape runner to the back of them and then just adhere them on top of each of these inner tubes just like that. And then you can just take each one of those, add some tape runner on the back of those, and layer them right into the pool. So we're going to add our unicorn, our sloth, and our llama right into the pool. Then I'm just going to kind of shift some characters around, pull that unicorn up so I can add that little beach ball floating around. And then we have that fun little speech bubble that says stay cool, which I think is particularly perfect for that adorable unicorn. 
Next, we're going to do some heat embossing. And here I have some black cardstock, and I'm going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool. That way, our white heat embossing powder will only stick to our nice sticky ink, and it won't go anywhere else on our cardstock. So I'm going to stamp out the Make a Splash sentiment with a cute little exclamation point at the end. And I'm actually going to end up stamping this out twice in some clear heat embossing ink. And the reason I like to do these twice is that sometimes when you put heat embossing powder on, it just doesn't turn out perfect. And so for me, it's really easy to just stamp them twice because I can add the heat embossing powder to each of them really, really easily. And then I can heat it up with my heat tool and just pick my favorite one. And if they both turn out perfect, then I'll have a sentiment for another card in the future, which is really awesome. I would probably just store it right with my stamp set so that I could use it next time. Now I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim right around this. I'm kind of just looking through there using that wire guide to help me. I'm going to trim right around that just so that it looks almost like one of those um, old Dymo labels, right? Where it's like the black with the white on top. We're going to add some tape runner to that and then we're going to layer that right over the edge. And I love how it's sticking out past the edge of the pool. And oh my goodness, this card is so cute. And this is a recreation of a card by Callie. So thank you so much, Callie, because this card is just so adorable and so sweet. And I I love seeing the sparkle of all of that glitter and it's such a fun shaker. This would definitely make somebody smile. Next up, we're going to be creating an easy to recreate clean and simple card. And one of the best ways to do that is to use the stitch triple backdrop to create your pool. Now we're die cutting some awesome shimmer cardstock. So that shimmer already makes it feel really special. And then that stitch detail is just amazing. Now next up here we have a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter and because the die cuts a piece the exact same size we're actually going to be trimming off a quarter of an inch on either side so that we'll have a nice little border on the card and one thing I love about this ripple backdrop is that you can easily just trim it down. You don't need to worry exactly about where you're trimming because the stitch ripple is going to look amazing no matter what. And we can add some tape runner on the back and then layer it onto the standard size card base and you'll see you have that beautiful white frame that I think really, really makes the stitch ripple backdrop pop and it really makes the whole scene pop. You'll see once we finish the card. So here we have that awesome pool party stamp set with all of our cute critters and a bunch of inner tubes stamped and colored and die cut out. And then we're going to go ahead and add each of the critters to these inner tubes. Another fun way that would be quick to add some color to the inner tube is that you could stamp them on colored cardstock or on pattern paper. And that would be a really, really fun look too. It might be quicker than coloring them in if you wanted to make a bunch of cards like this. So we're going to layer each critter onto the inner tube and then we're going to add the inner tube to our cool little stitch ripple backdrop here which is kind of looking like a pool. Then we're going to stamp out the sentiment and here we have just floating by to say and this is one of the reasons why I love this card design because you'll see the rest of the sentiment is going to be filled into that speech bubble. So we'll have a lot of ways that you could use this card design for a lot of different cards. So here we're going to die cut the just floating by to say with one of our awesome little banners here and you'll see that the banner was a bit long but what's cool about that is you can just take the banner line it right back up to be the exact size that you want it to be hold that in place with some tape and run it through the die cut machine. And that's going to give you a custom size banner that'll fit any sentiment size. So you could do that with any of these awesome banner dies and create just a perfect little custom banner. So we're going to add some foam squares to the back of this to give it a nice little pop. And we'll put that right in the center of the card. And we're going to add our speech bubble that says happy B day. But if you remember from the beginning of the video, the stamp set has a bunch of different phrases that can fit in that speech bubble. So you could have this card be all sorts of different themes from hello to graduation, to thank you, to thinking of you, etc. And I think that would be a really, really cute way to use one card design for a lot of different occasions. You could even leave that speech bubble off and just add the correct speech bubble right when you're ready to send the card and you'll be always ready for the perfect occasion. Next up, Shari is taking these critters to the beach. She's creating both an ocean and a shore. It's really cool. So take it away, Shari. So for my card today, I'm using the new pool party critters. I've already colored and cut out my pieces here using the coordinating dies. And I've also cut a piece of Bristol cardstock with the new stitch rippled backdrop. And I'm going to be doing some ink blending. My critters today are headed to the beach rather than the pool. So I'm using three different colors of ink. So I'm starting out with salvaged patina. And I'm going to do light to dark kind of diagonally across this card. Now I have peacock feathers as my second color. 
And I did quite a bit of salvage patina in that corner because the very bottom corner I'm going to cover up with some craft cardstock for my sandy beach. So that's why I was holding that border die there so you could kind of see the idea that I'm going for. So I'm just going back and forth between the lighter and the darker colors and making sure I blend out that line between the two. And then the last color I plan to use on the corner is Salty Ocean. And I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper to help hold my piece of Bristol cardstock so that I don't get any fingerprints on the ink that I've already applied. And I'll just fill in the rest of this white area with that salty ocean. So the idea is to go from that lighter blue water that's at the sand and at the shoreline out to deeper, darker blue. And I actually felt like it needed to be slightly darker. So I pulled in some blueprint sketch just for this really dark upper corner. Now, of course, since I use Distress Oxide ink, it does react to water. So I'm spraying a little bit of water on my fingers and flicking it so I get some spots of water. And then I'm just gonna lay a paper towel on top and pick it up so I get some nice light areas in my water. Just adding a few more splatters to that upper right corner. And then I'm also going to add some white metallic watercolor splatters. This way I'll get some shimmer when the light hits it a certain way. Kind of like the shimmer you get off the ocean water when you're sitting out in the bright sunshine. Now to create my sandy beach, I have a piece of craft cardstock cut to four and a quarter, which is the same width as my background that I inked. And I'm just going to use this stitched wavy border to cut my shoreline and create my beach. Once I have that cut on the diagonal, I am going to ink it up a little bit with some tea dye ink. Just to darken up the edge, it makes that stitching really pop. And it makes it not look so plain. It gives it some dimension. And then I'm also going to add some speckles. So this is some vintage photo distress oxide that I've just smushed onto my craft mat and added some water, picking it up with my paintbrush and then tapping it to get some dark brown splatters on my sandy beach. So once those splatters are dry, I'm just going to add this to that bottom left corner of the panel that I created earlier. And then I can add this whole panel to my card base. So now that I have my beach already, I can start to decorate it with my little critters. So this little unicorn, he is laying out in the sun on his beach towel on the shoreline here. And of course, he's kicked off his flip-flops while he sunbathes. I am popping that unicorn up on some thin foam squares so there's a little bit of dimension there. And I'll just glue those flip flops right to that craft card stock. Now I've stamped out the little speech bubble in this set and I am stamping the sentiment that says happy summer inside. I'll just add this with a little foam square like the unicorn is telling everyone happy summer. Now one of the other critters I have here, actually I'm adding some sunglasses, decided it looked best on the unicorn who's sunbathing. I have that cute llama who is floating on the inner tube or the pool float here. And then I also have that sloth who is doing a little bit of snorkeling. So I'm going to add that snorkel to his face. And I'll glue the sloth directly to the card base. And then for the llama on the inner tube, I'm going to pop it up with some foam squares. Now for the sentiment, I'm stamping out the sentiment, have a relaxing summer on some guava cardstock. I've stamped that right at the edge of this piece that I have, and then I will trim it with my paper trimmer. I'm basically making my own little square banners. And then the other part of the sentiment, I'm going to stamp, take it slow. Doing the same thing, stamping it towards the top and then I'll just trim it. And then with my scissors, I will trim down the ends so I have two rectangles that fit the sentiments perfect.
And then I'm going to lay these on here and figure out their placement before I stick them down. And I decided I wanted to pop these up with some foam squares. And then of course I still have that little beach ball sitting there. I'm going to tuck that behind that have a relaxing summer sentiment. I think that fits really nicely. So you have this little gathering of three elements in the top right and three in the bottom left and that really works good for placement. I decided to add a little bit of glitter accents so I traced the snorkel, added a little bit to the beach ball, some to the sunglasses, and then of course to the flip-flops. And here is my finished relaxing summer card. I think that that ombre look of the inked beach ocean is really fun. This card is so cute, Shari. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And first up, we have a super cool card by Elena. I love how she used the inner tubes to be the two O's in the word cool. So cute and so fun. I love how Tammy incorporated a lot of other favorite critters from other sets along with the pool party critters. It's so adorable. Grace brought back the gingham as the base for her amazing pool, and I just love the look of the bright orange on the summary card. This card by Yanea is so beautiful. I love how she created that diagonal line to show both the beach and the shore. It's too cute. Audrey created a lazy river with some really cool inking with our hillside stencils, and I love this idea so much. This card by Maureen is just too cute. I love how she brought some of our tropical leaves in to create such a cute scene for her critters. Mindy created a really cool shaker card, and I love the big summer letters cut out of Cole's ABCs. This is the card by Callie that inspired us to make ours today, and I just love these pools with the shaker detail behind it. I love the clean and simple look of this card by Elise. She just ink blended a little, stamped those cool waves from the set, and created such a cool card. And she was on a roll because how adorable is this pool shaker? I love that she used those flowers from Flower Market in the background. Leticia created such a fun tropical scene, bringing in both the palm trees and that adorable umbrella, and I just love it. I love that Kara used her incredible marker skills to create a really cool realistic pool and a really fun tiled floor behind it. And this card by Lynette is so sweet. I love the scalloped border and how she's got the little cat under the beach umbrella and then everyone else out in the pool. So sweet and so cute. And we cannot wait to see what you guys create with Pool Party and Stitch Ripple Backdrop. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye! Thank you.